Hello, and welcome to the start of the 2018-2019 school year for the Greater Green Devil community. I'd like to begin by thanking you for taking the time out of your schedule to watch this video. The same message that I hope to share with you today is how we kicked off our school year with all of our staff this past Tuesday. In short, our district focus this year will be on student achievement. And as we go through these slides and through the presentation, there's a couple of words that you'll hear several times. One of them is student achievement. Another one is accountability. And then there's also this urgency for a new learning style of learning, unlearning, and relearning. So without further ado, let's get into the program. The one entity that unites the 500 square miles, shown on both of these maps, is the Adams Friendship Area School District. Now, a diploma from our school represents that each graduate is college and career ready. That as they leave our institution, each student can make the decision to be, uh, to enter the workforce, to enter the military, uh, technical college, four-year university, college, whatever, it is their option. They can choose any one of those four. Our mission statement states that we, perform, we prepare our students to perform for life. So when they graduate, they can pick any of those four. They're not limited to one of those four, and that's very important. We, as a school district, are accountable for that, that responsibility to our students. And this year, we're all going to perform our jobs with an urgency that matches the importance of our work. In the past, these two graphs that I'm showing were, were the focus for our school district. But that's not our case anymore. As a school district, we have set a course. We will continue to consolidate our services and move to one centralized campus. The when and the how will be determined by factors that are out of our control. The when and the how will be determined by student enrollment and then the state funding formula. And when we look at this, when compared with our most pressing challenge, this really is the easy stuff. Last spring, our community supported a referendum. For five years, we will receive an extra $950,000. And part of that referendum, we had stated that the mill rate was going to go down 0.45. So each property owner has property taxes, and a portion of those property taxes go to support your public school. How they figure that out is through the mill rate. Last year, our mill rate, and the previous year, our mill rate was 9.24 per every $1,000 evaluated property. In our calculations, we had figured that with the referendum, that our mill rate would drop 45 cents. We had our annual meeting this past week, and the most recent projection is that it'll drop even more, that the mill rate will drop 0.76. So that's all very good news. What used to be in our district, for most of the recent history, we used to worry about, well, where, where can we cut that least impacts student achievement? Where, where do we have to cut? That discussion is no more. From this point on, for the next five years, for this window of opportunity, we have the, di the discussion, we have the question is, how will we invest in our students? That's what the referendum has allowed us to do. And in short, money can no longer be an excuse that we use. We now are accountable for narrowing it down and drilling down to student achievement. What I'd like to do over the next couple of slides is explain those programs that we have in place that help get to that student achievement piece. Uh, programs that help our students with their mental health needs, with their social and emotional learning needs. 
we said this many times during the campaign for the referendum that it would allow our experts to, to be experts. So we have, we've, we've added a social worker this year for our students, a, another full-time psych, school psychologist. We've added a, another full-time school resource officer. We've recovered one of our interventionists. Those interventionists are our teachers that specifically work on skill sets with our children, primarily at the elementary level. Uh, we retain a behavior interventionist. Uh, and we've done several things that the referendum has allowed us to do. But remember, as I stated earlier, the work that is yet to be done is to address that student achievement. On Tuesday morning, when the Fine Arts Center was full of our staff, I had asked everyone that had been involved in, in a program to stand. And what I'm going to do here is list off all of the different programs, sustainable activities that we have used in our district that allow our students to get into a learning mode quicker. So I'll just run through them quick for you. Uh, we had staff that supported the Web or the Link program, staff that would teach positive action. We have the Safe School Ambassadors, Restorative Practices, PBIS, uh, students had received the signs of suicide curriculum, staff that had taken the Youth Mental Health First Aid training, staff that were members of the Trauma Sensitive Schools, students that had received the Second Step curriculum, uh, anyone who supported the Student Wellness Day at the high school, anyone who's made a referral for a student to access extra support, to access extra support, uh, if they participated in a Compassion Resilience Toolkit, if they learned how to use Review 360, if you supported uh, things like the One Act Play last year, uh, Nobody Heard Me Cry, if you connected with a kid through the DOT survey, and then most importantly, if you were able to build a relationship with one of our students. We, we tried to express to everybody that we have so many programs that every one of our staff members participates in that leads to our students being successful. And part of that is that we were recognized this summer at a national level. So last May, the state of Wisconsin asked our school district to go to a rural mental health seminar in Washington, D.C. We went and we were showing this national council how our district works with our students for their mental health needs, how we co-locate providers, all the different programs that we have. In audience was this gentleman, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Alex Azar. So shortly thereafter, there was the tragic school shooting in Florida. And our federal government started the Federal Commission on School Safety, of which Alex Azar is a member. So this commission wanted to go out and find ways that schools were proactively helping their students. He had seen Adam's Friendship's presentation, so he selected us. So this summer, this delegation from this Federal Commission on School Safety came and visited our school. They came to learn from us what we were doing, what we were having success when it came to students' mental health, to their social and emotional learning. So those are examples of programs that we have in place that will allow us to concentrate on direct instruction, allow us to concentrate on student achievement. So let's review, if we can, the need for the improvement. It's very important that the numbers on these report cards, we understand that they do not represent, they do not, uh, they do not represent our students. What these numbers are doing is they're exposing a practice 
that we as a school district need to improve. And that major practice that we need to improve is student achievement, specifically the achievement gap. So we can see that our scores are trending down. We're, we are resolute to have those scores begin to trend up. So the main reason I had spoken to it earlier was the achievement gap. When the state report cards are being calculated, they categorize your students into several different categories, and then they compare those categories. And if one group is performing much better than the other, you have an achievement gap. So where Adams Friendship Schools, as our scores represent, our achievement gap is growing and growing. Our three main student groups are our students with special needs, our students in poverty, and our regular education students not in poverty. That achievement gap between those groups is growing. And our focus this year will be to get that achievement gap to be reduced. So if we can backtrack a little bit to the previous slides, think of all the programs that we have in place. They have eliminated a lot of the other factors that impact that achievement gap. In, in my belief, I see it as the one remaining piece for our district to focus on is student instruction. That's the achievement gap that we're now at a time to address. The state of Wisconsin is divided up into 13 different areas, and those are called CESAs. Ours is CESA 5, and it's headquartered in Portage. So let's see how our scores are comparing with the rest of the schools in CESA 5. The Adams Friendship, we are second from the bottom. And once again, that represents our achievement gap. And that's what we're going to target this year in our programs and efforts are to climb that ladder. We're going to pour our efforts, our talents, our skills all year into climbing that ladder. We have a plan. We're going to be accountable for that plan at every level. And we will be more successful when it comes to those state scores. Now part of the plan has been in place for several years with those programs that we mentioned earlier. But here's a new effort. And it's the, the art of reverse engineering. Those in the business world are very familiar with it. If somebody else has a similar product and they're making it better, you go to that other business, you find out what they're doing, and you bring it back. Well, schools, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to identify, this year, we're going to identify schools that have similar demographics, student count, socioeconomic, and we're going to build a relationship with that school. The one difference is we're going to target schools in which the achievement gap is being reduced. And we're going to find out what they're doing that's different than what we are doing. In exchange, many schools are very interested in how we address our mental health and our social and emotional needs. So it'll be a wonderful exchange between our district and another district. And just for an example, in our own backyard of some reverse engineering, just on a different scale, this is a picture of P.J. Fleck, who is the head football coach at the University of Minnesota. Started there last year, was his first year, and he and his team faced the Wisconsin Badgers. After the loss, the Badgers won 31-0, uh, the press interviewed P.J. Fleck and they said, so what do you have to say? And his response was flat out unacceptable. And he assures they'll be better. So that's that accountability piece, accountability piece that we're instilling this year focused on student achievement. And he also mentioned the week of the game that he has been studying Wisconsin football. He's going to learn from them copy it and install it in his own program. So that's that same reverse engineering that we are going to do with other school districts this year. That's part of our plan for improvement. And as I reflected on that, it took me back to the year 1990 in Madison when this gentleman was a first year head coach for the Wisconsin Badgers. And I won't play the 
the video, but it's that clip, it's a famous clip when there's a, a member of the press at his first press conference saying, you know, Mr. Alvarez, you have 70,000 plus seats at Camp Randall and very few season ticket holders. What are you going to do? And without hesitation, he looks right at him and he says, uh, we'll get your season tickets now because they're going to be hard to come by. Similar, he had a plan. He held everybody accountable. He went out. He installed the plan. And then they had success. So you may be wondering <laughs> why we're looking at a scene from Star Wars. So this is that concept. When I started off, I had mentioned that we, there's an urgency for us to and our students to to learn, unlearn, and relearn. So allow me to play this brief little video, and then I'll go into further detail. We'll never get it out now. So sure to know you. Always with you, what cannot be done. Nothing that I say. Master, moving stones around is one thing. This is totally different. No. No different. Only different in your mind. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No. Find not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. showed this to our staff, and remember, we have 225 staff members. There, there are a couple of chuckles in the crowd, and I understand completely. But, but here's the point. I was trying to demonstrate to our staff that we are at such a critical place in time that we have to be able to adjust and adapt at a much faster pace than ever before. So with that video, you have a student who's faced with a problem. His problem was his plane is stuck in the mud, and he can't get it out. So he's trying what he knows as a technique, and it was unsuccessful. His teacher, Master Yoda, is saying, no, 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 no. You're going about it all wrong. You have to unlearn what you believe you know, so then you can learn something new. So that was back in 1980 when that came. Allow me, if I can, to go into more detail about the urgency of this skill. And this slide has a ton of information on it. But let's begin by studying this one in the lower right-hand corner. This is a graph that has been around for many, many years. And what it's saying is, as we advance as civilizations, and as technology improves, the amount of knowledge is spiking up at a tremendous rate. So kind of think of... Um, Knowledge used to double every generation or so. At the current time, right now, our knowledge is doubling every two to three years in the world. And what the, the other facts, the predictions, over on that side are saying, it's going to keep ramping up. So what is now every two to three years, knowledge will be doubling in the near future every 12 hours. And some things that, that lead people to believe is that the internet as we know it will no longer exist. It'll just be seamless with our lives. Uh, two billion jobs will disappear, replaced by jobs not yet created. And this is an important thing for us to understand. As I spoke to the crowd, I explained to how the job that my father had, a small motor mechanic, he fixed lawnmowers, chainsaws, that type of thing, that job's tough to come by, because nowadays people do not get those items fixed. They do simple maintenance, and when they break, they go and buy a new one, and it's cheaper. So that used to be a generational, where each generation they would have jobs that wouldn't exist. What our students are faced with is over their career, several times they're going to have jobs that don't exist anymore, jobs that they were trained for.
that is where this belief of learning, unlearning, and relearning. And this quote in the middle, uh, I believe, sums it up the best. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And just to bring it back again, it's the urgency of that skill that our students are faced in order for them to succeed. So we have to ask ourselves this question. This year's senior class, they will enter adult life and they'll be working for 40, hopefully 50 years. How many times in their lifetime will they have to learn something, unlearn, and then relearn? And that's a skill that as a school district, we are responsible, we are accountable for teaching them. That's that student achievement gap that we're going to address. So now take it to our eighth grade, our current eighth grade students. By the time they graduate, how many times will they have to learn, unlearn, and relearn? Now remember, knowledge is doubling every two to three years right now. So at least once, the things that they're learning now will be obsolete. They'll be forced to learn something new. And now what about our first grade class, the class of 2030? By that time, the prediction is that our knowledge will double every 12 hours, twice a day. So the skill of learning, unlearning, and relearning is going to be one of primary importance as we go forward. But there's one group besides our students that we have to that we have to address, that we have to think about, that are very critical in this. And that's what about us? By us, that was everybody in the room that Tuesday morning, those of us who are in education. How can we teach if we cannot do? So those of it's it's difficult for the adults who have learned one way to relearn, to unlearn and then relearn. Whereas if a student, if this is the way that they are taught, they'll be more adapt to it. So there's a big challenge for the educators to learn how to do this. We're really at, a, at an important time. This is nothing new that schools haven't had to face for generations, for over 100 years. They've had this same, this same issue of being able to learn something new. What is driving it to utmost importance right now is the urgency. Knowledge is doubling faster and faster. So let's kind of try and capture everything as far as our plan. The first step was to show our data and where we're trending. Our state scores are not acceptable. Remember, they don't represent who our students are. They do represent, they expose our practices. And it's that achievement gap that we will focus in on this year, and we will close that achievement gap. In order to have success, you need to have a plan. Part of our plan was to install all of those programs that help our students with their mental, social, and emotional needs. They're in place. Another part of that plan is to reverse engineer with another district. Find out a, a similar district, why is their achievement gap smaller than ours? And share that information and apply it to our district. The third step is to have our staff commit to this culture change of the skill that we're trying to teach of learning, unlearning, and relearning. In order for that culture change to exist, for it to happen, we have to have accountability amongst everyone involved and the trust that the person down the hall or the person at a different age group, however, the trust that everybody is doing their job to its utmost. And then it comes down to, what are we prepared to do? And I ask that question to the educators and everybody that, was, that, that works for the district. What are you prepared to do to make this happen?
we control student instruction. Everything else has variables outside of our control. But that, that student instruction is what we need to focus on, that student achievement that we're accountable for. So then I ask the question, how can I help improve student instruction? What I'm going to do in my position as district administrator is I'm dedicating time to get inside of the classrooms, time to provide our staff with accurate, timely, impactful feedback about their practices, about their direct instruction. I will gather that information. I'll share it with our building leadership. They can use that information for their professional development. I can share it with a district school improvement team. I'll share the information with that group. They then drive our strategic planning with curriculum. They use it for professional development. So on my end, I am dedicating my time and my data collection to improving student achievement. So I said that to everybody in the room. And then I said, everybody silently, think of what you're going to do. They thought of it, and then they had to share it with their neighbor. So they said it out loud, it will be so. Similar to what I'm doing right here for our community. I'm saying out loud, here's our plan. Here is how we're going to be accountable. Here's our target, student achievement. I'm telling everybody, here's what I'm doing to help that student achievement. Student achievement. I've said it out loud. Now it will be so. As I started off, I had said there's some words that will be repeated several times. Achievement, uh, accountability, that urgency, to learn, unlearn, and relearn. So hopefully the slideshow hit on that. And that's going to be our focus this year. With the help of our leadership team, with the help of everybody in that room on that Tuesday morning, we're going to be successful. As I said, to learn, to unlearn, and to relearn has been around for generations. Our urgency is that it's happening so quickly now for our students. And if you recall, when we graduate our students, they need to have the choice to be career and college ready no matter where they go. And that skill is critical to it. It'll take courage, uh, it'll take resolve, it'll take some expertise from everybody that works with the school district. And I, and I, I become upset when I see other districts, when I see other people around the state look at our students and view them as second-class citizens. They look at those test scores and they think those scores identify our students. They do not. They identify our practices. And those practices are changing. Uh, no longer in our district are we going to hear the excuses of, well, that's not my worry. Um, well, that's just those kids. Or, or that's those parents, or that's good enough for me. Uh, no more. We, our school district, is accountable for student achievement. We are accountable to teach our students and ourselves how to unlearn what we have learned so then we can relearn. As a parent of two students in our school district, I am lit with excitement. When I looked at that room on Tuesday morning, I saw a room full of passionate, caring, knowledgeable experts ready to commit to our students, ready to commit to student achievement. And in my one year in district, there were just amazing examples of the love that we share for our students and the care. So all of the pieces are in place. We have all of those programs that we have started and we've had success. We have the funding through the referendum. The last piece to really focus on and improve is that student achievement. And I can see as our, as our seniors get their diplomas this year at the end of May, that everyone in that room that was here this past Tuesday can walk away uh, with their head held high and, and let that student achievement win the day. Let our kids win the day and change that discussion and allow them to be college and career ready. Uh, 
I, I can't stress enough this year, it's going to be about student achievement. It's going to be about being accountable for that student achievement and recognizing the urgency that we have for our students. And each one depends on us to make a difference in their lives. And we'll do it this year. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, we have first day of school, Tuesday, September the 4th. Let's make it a great year for all Green Devils.